Welcome back to Astro Demetrios. This video will explore plotting in Matplotlib. If you haven't already, head over to jupiter.org slash try, go to File and Open to see the file tree, select Upload and upload the file exobase.csv that is provided for you. You should see it now in your file tree. Click on New Python 3 to open up a new blank notebook. Remember, change the name of the notebook by pressing Untitled at the top and then Rename. Save your notebook using the Save button in the top left and when you're finished, hit the Download button. Let's start by importing some of the modules that we'll need. We'll start by importing NumPy, which we saw in our Introduction to Python video. Here we'll import Pandas, which is a library that will allow us to open and read our CSV data. And finally, we'll import matplotlib and the pyplot interface as PLT. Now let's open our exobase.csv file using pandas. First, we'll define a variable with our file name. Then, we'll assign our variable df, which is short for data frame, using the pandas function read underscore csv. When we've done that, we can print the first five rows of our data frame using the pandas function dot head. You should now be able to see the first five rows of our data frame have been printed. The CSV file exobase.csv contains details about the exobase, which is a layer in the atmosphere, for all the planets plus the moon Titan. You should also be able to see the escape velocity for each planet on the far right of the data frame. We can access columns in our data frame like so. Here, we create a new column, exobase mean temp, by calculating the average of the exobase temperatures. Now, if we type df.head again, you should see the column exobase mean temp has been added to the end of the data frame. We can access the values in a column by typing df, open bracket, our string, which is our column name, close our bracket, and dot values. Here, we have taken the names of our planets and Titan and put them in an array called names. And we have also taken the column for escape velocity, divided by six, and assigned it to the variable escape velocity sixth. We're going to make a plot of the escape velocities of our planets and Titan divided by a sixth versus the escape velocities of certain gases. Now, if these gases have escape velocities that are higher than one sixth the escape velocity of our planets, then they can escape from the atmosphere. So this plot will help us see what gases are retained by planetary atmospheres and what gases can escape into space. Here, I'm calculating the masses of certain gases. We have hydrogen, helium, oxygen, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. And then I'm defining a range of temperatures. And over that range of temperatures, I'm calculating the escape velocity in kilometers per second for each of those gases. Finally, I take all of those escape velocities and I put them in one list to simplify my code that I'm going to write later on. Now let's start plotting with matplotlib. To start, we need to create a new figure and some axes for that figure. To create a figure, we'll use the plot.figure command. The num is the plot number, which will give a unique value of one. And we'll define the figure size to be 10 inches in the x direction and six inches in the y direction. To create our axes, we'll use the command plot.subplot. The argument 111 in the plot.subplot call tells matplotlib that we want this axis to cover one row and one column of our figure and to start at index one. Now we have our axes, let's plot something. I'm going to loop over 
all of our escape velocities for our gases, which is the 4i in range, len all vs. The len function will get the length of our variable all underscore vs, which is our list of escape velocities for our gases. And the range will create a range of values from zero up to, but not including, the length of our variable all underscore vs. For each of those escape velocities, we're going to plot the escape velocity against the temperature. The command axe.plot creates a line plot. The z order defines which line will be drawn first. Higher numbers will be drawn above lower numbers. The axes that you see have a z order of zero. LW is shorthand for line width. We've set transparency using the keyword alpha. An alpha of zero is completely transparent, whereas an alpha of one is opaque. This data would be best displayed using log axes. Here we set both scales on our x and our y axes to log. Now let's also set the y limits and the x limits for our axes. Notice how setting the scales to log changed the tick labels to scientific notation. Let's undo that using matplotlib.ticker. Here we import matplotlib.ticker as mticker. We define our x ticks to be at the points 100, 200, 400, 600 and 1000. We set the labels for those x ticks to simply be those numbers. And now we change the location of the minor ticks, the smaller tick marks, to be at locations which are a multiple of 100. We can set the y ticks in a similar fashion. Here we set the y ticks to be our list of numbers. We again set the y tick labels to be the same list. And finally, we set the minor locator to be a null locator. This means that no minor ticks will be displayed on the y-axis. Now let's plot our planets onto this figure as well. For i in range len names, we'll loop over each of our planets plus Titan. First, we get the temperature, which we'll use the mean temperature for. And then we will plot each planet as a single scatter point. We can do this with the axe.scatter command. The first value is our x value. The second value is our one-sixth of the escape velocity of the planet. Then we define the color of the scatter point. S is the size of the scatter point. Alpha, again, is the transparency. EC is shorthand for edge color, which we'll define as none. And finally, we'll give our scatter plot a z order of two so that it draws over the top of the gas lines that we plotted earlier. Let's try and color the planets individually instead of having them all blue and change the size depending on the radius of the planet. Here, I've defined a dictionary called colors, where the keywords are the planet name or titan, and the values are strings of named colors from matplotlib. I've also defined a sizes array to scale the size of each planet based on their radius. All we need to do now is change our keyword arguments in axe.scatter to use the colors in our colors dictionary and to use the size from our sizes array. You'll notice that the value we pass to the sizes keyword argument has to be a list. Now let's start to add some text to our plot so we can differentiate between the colored lines and the planets. Here I've used the axe.text command to plot text for each of the gas lines. The first number is the x position where the text will be displayed. 
the second, the Y position. The third is the text that you want to render. Notice that my text is within dollar signs, which tells Matplotlib to render the text using LaTeX and Maths mode. The keyword rotation will rotate our text anti-clockwise by the amount that I've specified in the ROT or ROT variable above. HA is shorthand for horizontal alignment, which I've set to center, and I've defined the color as the variable text color, which is defined above as gray. You can find a list of named colors online in the matplotlib documentation. The R in front of the string for carbon dioxide means that we want a raw string. Raw strings allow us to use special characters such as the backslash and an apostrophe or quotation marks within our string, whereas normally an apostrophe or a quotation mark would end or begin a string. Here I've added text for each of the planet names inside our for loop using the axe.txt command. The command takes positions from the new position dictionary above the for loop. This is an easy way to quickly change the position of just one planet's label. Here I've defined a variable called long text, which contains a long text string that I would like plotted onto my axes, which contains information about the plot. Here you can see I've used backslash n in my long text string. This is the new line command so that my text wraps around and starts a new line every time it sees that command. Again, I can use the axe.txt command to plot my long text text onto my figure. Here, I've defined the color as light gray and specified a font size. You'll also notice the transform keyword. Here, I've set the transform to be axe.transaxes, which means that I can specify the position of the text in axes coordinates, with zero being the bottom left-hand corner and one being the top right-hand corner. Let's now add some axis labels using the commands axe.setYlabel and axe.setXlabel. You can see that I've set my axis labels to also use maths mode to render superscript. Now let's change the color of the axes so that they aren't so imposing on the figure. We can use axe.spines and select our spine bottom, left, right or top and then dot set underscore color to define the color for each portion of our axis. Notice how this did not affect the ticks or the tick labels. To change their color, we'll use axe.tick underscore params. Passing both to the axis keyword argument tells matplotlib we want these changes to occur to both the x and the y axis. Passing both to the which keyword argument tells matplotlib we want these changes to apply to both the minor and the major ticks. The direction in specifies that our ticks should be inside the axis. Right true and top true make matplotlib also draw tick marks on the top and the right hand side of our figure. The pad command specifies a padding between the ticks and the tick labels and we've specified a color which is dark gray. Finally you'll want to save your figure. We can do that with the plot.savefig function. All we need to do is specify a string which will be our file name. You can also specify a DPI like I have done here. Don't forget to save your finished notebook and then head back to the file tree from earlier and you should see your saved image. Remember, all these changes that we made are not just about making our plot pretty. Each change made our visual easier to extract data from. You can clearly see here that the gas giants lie above all of our gas lines. This means that the gas giants can hold onto even the lightest gas, hydrogen. Now that you've downloaded your image, go back to the file tree and press the quit button to stop the Jupyter session. Now you're an expert in plotting with matplotlib, why not check out some of the other astronomy related data files on my GitHub. And remember, until next time, stay stellar.